This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can find all the cards in this video in their store by using the links in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Neat Tahone, and it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance and Magic's highest level of competition. Today, we're going to take a look at Magic's Top 10 Green Enchantments. Over the last few weeks, I've been looking at enchantments in each color. So far, I've looked at red, blue, and black, if you're interested in seeing how those lists shook out, and today we're continuing with a look at green enchantments. Green and white are probably the first colors you think of when you think of enchantments, and there's good reason for that, especially in recent years, when green is often given cards that pay you off for doing things with enchantments. But as you may know if you watched my top 10 on blue enchantments last week, of the five colors, green actually only has the third most enchantments. We'll see in this top 10 that green enchantments do have the highest average score of any of the colors we've looked at so far, so what it may not have in quantity, it makes up for in quality. In all, there are 547 green enchantments, and in this video we'll look at the 10 that have left the biggest impact on competitive magic. Before we get started, here's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A first tier top 8 is worth 2 points, this includes events like Pro Tours, and a second tier top 8 is worth 1 point, this includes events like Regional Championships. Alright, let's dive in with a look at green's top 10 enchantments. At number 10, it's Survival of the Fittest. For one generic and a green, it's an enchantment with a great activated ability. You could pay one green and discard a creature card to tutor up a creature card and put it into your hand. A repeatable tutor is a powerful thing, even when you have to give up a creature to search for one. Of course, the best way to offset that already small downside is to have ways to get creatures back from your graveyard. In other words, this one card can load your graveyard and tutor up any creature you want, and that's really powerful. Since the moment it was printed, Survival has seen play in multiple formats. In both Block and Standard, it was combined with fellow Exodus enchantment, Recurring Nightmare, to form what became the game's first true reanimator and first true toolbox deck. These two enchantments combined nicely together because Survival was a discard outlet that could let you put your Spirit of the Night in the graveyard, at which point you could bring it back with Recurring Nightmare. The deck was also loaded up with lots of singleton utility creatures that you could tutor up, and that's where the toolbox part comes in. Survival ultimately got banned out of Extended because it made creature-based decks so good, and it later got banned in Legacy 2. These days, the only 60-card format it's legal in is Vintage, and it still sees sporadic play there. That said, it's in some real danger of dropping off of this list in the future, as Utopia Sprawl and Up the Beanstalk are both within a few points of making the list. At number 9, it's Wilderness Reclamation. For 3 generic and a green, this enchantment untaps all of your lands at the beginning of your instep. This is the first of several green enchantments on this list that do stuff with mana or lands, which is pretty on brand for green. This can double your mana in a turn, and if you're doing things at instant speed, you can even sink all of that mana into an instant or activated ability. With that in mind, it should come as no surprise that Reclamation has been played in ramp decks, and in fact, it did so in ramp decks named for this powerful enchantment. Probably the most infamous of these Reclamation decks casted Nexus of Fate in the very early game and sought to just loop Nexuses until the game was over. Standard Reclamation decks also used all that sweet mana to cycle Shark Typhoon or cast a huge explosion. Reclamation decks were far too dominant in Standard, with more than half of the decks that top aided major events in 2019 featuring the card. It did the same thing in Pioneer, so it ultimately got banned in Standard, Pioneer, Explorer, and Historic. Reclamation decks have also made some appearances in Modern, but it doesn't have points anywhere since 2022. It's the only card in this list that's entirely inactive, and that doesn't bode well for it in the long run. At number 8, it's Hardened Scales. For 1 green mana, this enchantment lets you put an extra plus 1 plus 1 counter on a creature anytime you would put plus 1 plus 1 counters on one. This asks for a very small investment, and if your deck is plus 1 plus 1 counter heavy, it's definitely going to deliver more than 1 mana worth of value. It first found some success in Standard, where it was played alongside cards like Mana Gorger Hydra, which could really benefit from extra counters. After rotating out of Standard though, Hardened Scales went idle for a while, but starting in 2018, it started to take off in Modern. This green enchantment started to find success in a deck you'd never expect a green enchantment to see the light of day in, Affinity. Since 2019 especially, the most typical form of Affinity decks are all about plus and plus one counters. This is because several of the strongest artifacts out there involve those counters, most notably Arcbound Ravager, Hangerback Walker, and Walking Ballista. 
These cards can all go off together too, since if you get enough counters on the Ravager, which is pretty easy with a bunch of artifacts and hardened scale in play, you could just move them all to the Ballista and kill the opponent. Basically, this gave Affinity decks a new combo identity, in addition to the fact that it just made all these great artifact creatures even better. It's continued to be a huge factor in Modern over the last six years, and in fact the introduction of more and more artifacts that involve counters has just made it better. The most notable recent additions to the deck are Zabaz and Patchwork Automaton. Hardened Scales is going to keep on gaining points, but every card in front of it on the list is doing the same, so it's hard to say for sure if it will ever outpace the cards in front of it. At number 7, it's Dryad of the Elysian Grove. For 2 generic and a green, you get a 2-4 enchantment creature that lets you play an additional land on each of your turns. And it makes it so that lands you control are every basic land type in addition to their other types. So in other words, it both ramps and fixes your mana. Unsurprisingly, all of its points have come in ramp decks. In standard, it was played in some versions of Omnath Ramp. It was a nice fit there because it made it easier to cast the 4-colored Omnath and because it lets you trigger landfall more. It's been the most successful though in Modern, where it's utilized in both Valakut and Amulet Titan decks. Valakut decks use Scapeshift to search up multiple Valakuts and mountains to do lethal damage. The Dryad not only allows you to get lands in play more quickly, so that Scapeshift can do its thing earlier, it also makes all of your lands mountains, making it far easier to do lethal damage when you cast Scapeshift. Amulet Titan decks like the Dryad because they like to use Amulet of Vigor alongside the Ravnica Bounce Lands. With the Amulet in play, the Bounce Lands untap before returning to your hand, which means you can tap them for mana. And the Dryad can let you play the same one or two of them in a single turn, which gives you a total of four mana, which is pretty great. It's also recently started to see play in modern domain decks, which like having every land type in play to power up cards like Territorial Kavu. It's going to keep gaining points, especially in Modern, and it's got a pretty good shot at moving up the list. At number 6, it's Exploration. This enchantment costs 1 green mana, and it has one of the same effects that the Dryad has. It lets you play an extra land each turn. It has gained most of its points in Legacy Lands decks, which as you can probably guess are decks loaded up with lots of lands. This generally consists of a bunch of utility lands that can be tutored up, as well as the Dark Depths Thespian Stage combo, which allows you to power out an indestructible 2020 flyer immediately. Exploration helps you get those lands into play more quickly, and it can get particularly spicy with Life from the Loam, since it can allow you to rebuy utility lands like Wasteland and replay them, which allows you to destroy two lands in a turn. Exploration is going to keep gaining points in Legacy going forward. At number 5, it's Ranker. For 1 green mana, this enchantment is an aura with enchant creature, and it gives the enchanted creature plus 2, plus 0, and trample, and whenever Ranker is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, you return it to your hand. Arguably the best offensive aura ever printed, Ranker can make just about anything into a threat, and that's a big deal since it's just going to keep coming back to your hand so you can slap it on a new creature and make it into a threat. This eliminates one of the biggest downsides of auras, since normally you're risking getting two for one should your opponent kill the enchanted creature, but with Ranker there's no need to worry, at least not after it resolves. Ranker has an interesting design history. There was a serious behind the scenes argument over whether this should cost one green or two generic in a green, and it got changed back and forth a ton before being sent to the printers. Those who wanted it to cost two generic in a green claim they got duped because they thought they won the argument and then the card came out looking like this. And yeah, it makes sense because one green mana for this effect is pretty awesome, especially back in 1999 when auras were rarely pushed. Anyhow, Ranker has been a multi-format all-star. As a result of its original printing, it saw playing green aggro decks in block standard and extended, and it later got a reprint in Magic 2013, giving it another run through standard, one that it very much took advantage of. That format had an aura hexproof deck, basically a precursor to Bogles, where the plan was to slap auras like Ranker on creatures like Geist of St. Traft. This let you make your creatures huge while not worrying about removal at all. It's been played in decks with the same strategy in both Modern and Popper, the latter being a format where only commons are legal. It's also been played in Modern Infect decks, slapping Ranker on your Glistener Elf is pretty great, as it can make your opponent gain poison counters in a hurry, especially because Ranker isn't usually the only thing buffing your creature's power. Ranker's going to keep gaining points, especially in Popper, but it's unlikely that it will ever do better than number 5 on this list. At number 4, it's Oath of Nyssa. For 1 green mana, when this legendary enchantment enters the battlefield, you look at the top 3 cards of your library and you can reveal a creature, land, or planeswalker from among them and put it into your hand. It also lets you spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast planeswalker spells. 
There's a whole cycle of oaths, and it started in Oath of the Gatewatch. They are all legendary enchantments that have some type of effect, and then an effect related to Planeswalkers. This one is a solid card selection spell that also makes it easier to cast your Planeswalkers, and that's a lot of value for one mana. It was a staple in a variety of standard green decks, and it also helped make one standard deck in particular truly broken, the copycat combo, which uses Sahili Rai and Felidar Guardian. If you use Sahili's minus two on the Guardian, you get a copy that blinks Sahili, so you can use her minus two again, and you can just keep going from there until you have enough Felidar Guardians to swing for lethal. The oath helped make the deck's mana way more consistent, and its Enter the Battlefield ability could grab you either half of the combo. It's also performed quite well in Pioneer, where it's been played in Devotion to Green decks for a very long time. It's great there because it helps you find your Nykthos or your Planeswalkers that tend to be your win conditions, and it adds to your Devotion. In fact, it was so good in Pioneer back when the format started that it got banned there just a few weeks into its existence. However, it would be unbanned the next year, and it's remained unbanned in the format ever since, allowing it to rack up lots of top finishes in Devotion decks. It's also done significant work in Modern, generally in decks with important cards that it can help you find. For example, it's been used in decks that really need to find their Valakut, and it's also been featured in Modern copycat decks as well as Elementals. It's even seen a tiny bit of play in Legacy. Oath is super cheap and provides great card selection, so it's the kind of card that always has a chance to keep seeing play, and I expect it to. In both Pioneer and Modern, it has a decent chance at moving up the list. And number three, it's Sylvan Library. Normally when I show a card in a top 10, I like to use the original printing, but the original text on Sylvan Library is a complete nightmare, so we're going to go with the most recent reprint where it makes a lot more sense. This enchantment costs one generic and a green, and at the beginning of your draw step, you can choose to draw two additional cards. If you do, you can choose two cards in your hand that you've drawn this turn, and for each of them, you choose to either put it back on top of your library or pay four life. That's right, this is a green enchantment that lets you pay life to draw cards. Yeah, the color pie was pretty weird back in 1994. Even if it doesn't make much sense flavor-wise today, it's undoubtedly a powerhouse of a card, letting you draw up to two extra cards every turn. It does ask for some significant life, but it's often worth it. It found some success in both Standard and Extended during its early days, but Legacy is where it's truly taken off. It shows up in virtually all green decks in the format, whether they're aggressive like Zoo, or combo decks like Lands. It's perhaps at its most powerful in Legacy Death's Shadow, where having the option to pay 8 life a turn means you can kill your opponent in a swing or two with the deck's eponymous avatar. While it's not quite as prolific in Vintage, it sees play there too, but generally only in one deck, Bug Midrange. Sylvan Library is going to keep gaining points, and the very top of this list is actually kind of tightly grouped, so it's hard to say what will come out on top in the end, but for now, we know Sylvan Library's at number three, and at number two, it's... Oath of Druids, another old green enchantment that has horrible templating on its original printing, and to be honest, even the current oracle text isn't the clearest thing in the world, so I'll sum it up after I read it. It says, At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player chooses target player who controls more creatures than they do and is their opponent. The first player may reveal cards from the top of their library until they reveal a creature card. If the first player does, that player puts that card onto the battlefield, and all other cards revealed this way into the graveyard. In short, if this enchantment's in play, each player can choose, during their upkeep, to put the top creature card from their library directly into play, and all the other cards revealed into the graveyard. But they can only do this if their opponent has more creatures in play than they do. It might sound like it's a little tricky to get this symmetrical effect to work. I mean, what will you do if your opponent gets to cheat something into play? Well, the trick is to build a deck where that never happens, and to make sure whatever you cheat into play breaks the game. If your deck doesn't have any creatures in it, and in fact has ways to give your opponent's creatures, like Forbidden Orchard, you're never really going to have to worry about Oath of Druids helping your opponent. Its potential was first unlocked and extended, where it could allow you to cheat Morphling into play in the extreme early game. This was an incredibly difficult to deal with creature that could hit surprisingly hard thanks to all of its abilities. Later in its history, it would be paired with Sutured Ghoul or Cognivore, both of which took advantage of the fact that the Oath also milled a ton of cards. Ultimately, the Oath ended up getting banned in both Extended and Legacy. But that's okay, because Oath decks have been Tier 1 in Vintage for a very long time. Over the years, the creatures you can cheat into play have only become more and more impressive. Right now, the most common one is Atraxa Grand Unifier. Oath decks are going to continue to be a huge factor in Vintage going forward. And at number one, I've included two cards because they would have been at number one and number two anyway, and they're both green enchantments that hose blue decks. Choke, which is a legitimate number one, and Carpet of Flowers, which would have been at number two. 
In addition to having similar scores and hating on blue decks, they even try to accomplish the same thing, although they go at it in different ways. Both of them try to create a significant mana advantage while punishing your opponent for having islands. Let's talk about Choke first. It's an enchantment that costs two generic and a green, and, as the name would imply, chokes out all of your opponent's blue mana by keeping their islands from ever untapping. If you're tired of your blue opponent always having mana up for interaction, well, this is a great way to shut that off. So great that it's been played to hate on blue decks in every format it's ever been legal in. Carpet of Flowers goes in the other direction. For one green mana, it's an enchantment that gives you X mana of any one color during each of your main phases, and X is equal to the number of islands your opponents control. So yeah, for the low investment of one mana, the carpet will quickly net you insane amounts of mana against blue decks. The fact you get the mana boost during each main phase is no joke either. So it's not as good at locking blue mages out of the game as Choke is, but it lets you power out insanely strong cards way ahead of schedule. Like Choke, it's seen a ton of play over the years in every format it's ever been legal in. That's what allows both of these to outpace everything on the list, even a powerhouse like Oath of Druids. So those are the best green enchantments. If you want to own any of these powerful cards, check out the description where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each card that appeared in the video. If you want to make sure you catch future top 10s, don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to make sure you're all caught up on past top 10s, you should see a playlist on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching.